Whenever you're looking at anything to do with notification to individuals that have been affected by a breach, a lot of organisations sometimes think it's going to be a lot more straightforward than it actually is in reality. So just some of the things you have to think about is how easy is it to actually get all the data in a format? Have you got names and address details? Do you have email details if you're going to notify by that route? And it may be that an organisation has a number of sub-brands. So are you going to actually need to notify according to the sub-brand where that data has been compromised? And then you've got additional layers such as language. So it could be a French speaker, it could be a German speaker or an English speaker. You may need to translate that. And then finally, in terms of the data itself, you may have duplicate records. You may actually have people that have, it may be, I don't know, um, people that have applied for a loan or a credit card years ago, they may have moved address. So you really need to check that information um, to make sure that it's relevant because what you don't really want to do is be sending out notification correspondence where people are no longer living at that address. It's always a brand decision um, in terms of how they notify and when they notify. And, and realistically, a lot of the time it's working in partnership with that organisation we always say you, you, if you've made the decision you're going to tell the, the individuals and again the regulation will, will start to define that to a greater degree. It's, it's really as fast as possible but ensuring that you're trying to do it as accurately as possible because what you don't want to do is then have a tale where you've got people that have gone away or it's going to the incorrect address or you've made spelling mistakes or actually you're perhaps sending it to someone that's deceased. So it, it's really trying to get data accuracy at the same time so that you can get that message of reassurance out so you're actually letting the individual know what's happened, what you're doing about it and how potentially that you're looking to, to help those individuals mitigate the, the impact of, of that data um, being compromised. I think when you're looking at notification correspondence, it's important to understand this is a compliance letter on behalf of the organisation that's sending it. So it, it's always something that's controlled to an extent by their legal and compliance teams. It tends to need to be fairly factual. Um, and, and typically it, it looks around firstly and what we normally see is an apology, then what, what's actually happened, so the salient points of, of the event itself, what type of information has been compromised, what the organisation are doing about it to, to rectify the situation and then depending on whether the, the, the client wants to offer some form of remediation it may then move into talking about credit monitoring services that someone like Experian offers or data monitoring services again where you're looking to provide kind of overwatch in terms of the credit file or the data file of that individual.